In this video, we are going to review how to capture a stack trace and core dump from a currently running Impala daemon. First, you'll need to identify the host where the Impala daemon you're interested in is running. For this demo, I'm going to get information about the Impala D on this node listed here in Cloudera Manager. I'll open an SSH connection as the root user. Cloudera support will provide the URL for the symbol package you'll need to download. The URL is different for each version of CDH, so make sure you're using the specific URL sent to you. I have the URL for the version I'm using in a text document here. You'll want to download the package file to an appropriate location. Here, I'm going to change to the TMP directory and use wget to download the file. That's going to take a few minutes, so let's skip ahead. Okay, that's finishing up, and now that we've got the symbol file downloaded, I'm going to create a directory to unpack it into, and cd into that new directory. Next, I'll use the rpm2cpio command to convert the format of the package from the parent directory. And pipe that to cpio-india delta mike victor to extract it to the current directory. That will take a couple of minutes, so let's skip forward. There we are. And now that the archive is extracted, I'll search in this directory for impolity.debug, which is the name of the file we're going to be using. Now, it turns out there are two impolity.debug files in there. For now, I'm going to copy both paths and paste them into my text document. I don't have the debug build enabled in this environment, so we should be using sbin-retail, but we'll confirm that in a moment. Before starting up the debugger, I'm going to create a directory to collect its output and CD into that new directory. Then, I'll run psax and grep through that output for Impala. You can see that the path to the running Impala D executable is the release build, not the debug build, just as I thought. So that means that from that text document, we're going to use the path to the symbols for the release build. Next, I'll grab the process ID for the Impala D process. Then I will use that to start up the debugger, GDB, with the argument dash dash PID for process ID followed by that process ID number. So GDB dash dash PID and the process ID number. Hit enter and that starts up the debugger. We get some startup output and that leaves us at the GDB prompt. The next step is to start capturing the output from the debugger with the statement set logging on. You can see it says copying output to gdb.txt. Next, I'll enter set height zero to avoid hitting the return key after every page of output. That's not strictly required, but it makes the process a lot quicker and easier. 
Then I'll grab the path to the symbol file from my text document and load that path with the symbol-file command. You'll see it says reading symbols and then it says done. Symbol file and then the path and reading the symbol file and then done. Now we're ready to get backtraces for all threads. The command is thread apply all backtrace or you can use the short version of BT instead of backtrace. Here I'll use the long version thread apply all backtrace and hit enter. And that just continuously scrolls all of the backtrace output for the threads. Once that stops, I'll enter gcore to get a core dump. Generating that core dump will take several minutes, so let's skip forward again. The debugger will eventually say that it saved the core file, so now we're ready to quit which will detach the ImpolaD process as it will warn. Yes. So now we have two output files, the gdb.txt thread output and the core file. Upload one or both to the case as instructed by Cloudera support. We've reviewed how to attach to a live Impala daemon process and generate a stack trace and core dump. Thanks for watching, and as always, please let us know if you have any questions.